There has been some significant news recently, within the last week or so, for the cryptocurrency community. That is the amount of money that has been pumped into Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market over the past week, with Bitcoin receiving the majority of it. However, I'll tell you what the rest of the market is doing and what has been happening during this relief rally because despite the hundreds of millions of dollars pouring in, the bear market's mood has not changed. Since 2021, a central bank digital currency project has been in development in Japan. I'm going to share the most recent information with you on what the general public thinks about this digital currency issued by the central bank and is programmable. And in some unusual cryptocurrency news, a bank supported by Warren Buffett has experienced significant growth. I'll explain what happened to this bank's user base and what Buffett stated he would do with the money he has on hand from this bank initiative. Because, in case you hadn't heard, Warren Buffett once disparaged Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, calling them rat poison. Hello everyone, I'm Randy. Hello again from the XRP vault. On this channel at the moment. News on cryptocurrencies, financial markets, and personal finances are all topics we cover. So be sure to click the subscribe button and join the XRP vault community if any of these subjects interest you. Please remember to click the bell notification button so that YouTube can alert you when I upload a new video. And if you could please hit the thumbs up button and watch the entire video, that would be greatly appreciated. Some of the finest things you can do to help a YouTube channel are the ones listed above. I would be very grateful if you could do that. Okay, folks, let's get started. Okay, so let's begin by discussing Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency industry, and how much capital is being invested there. Over $474 million was invested in the cryptocurrency market in the final week of July alone. The vast bulk of money has now gone to Bitcoin, in fact, $84.8 .8 million of it has gone into a Bitcoin. So there are some significant upward money flows into Bitcoin and Ethereum. On the other hand, despite a significant price increase of roughly $1,300 to $1,800, it only had inflows of roughly $400,000, but it did give part of it back during the preceding three days. Hernando also saw a $1.5 million influx at this point, yet it still managed to outperform the whole crypto market. Add the remaining dollar 300 plus million dollars, many of which barely broke even in terms of inflows, as I mentioned, Bitcoin attracted the majority of that cash. What does that mean for the cryptographic industry now? In current terrible market for cryptocurrencies, is there really a change in opinion about the price? This crypto market consolidation throughout the winter, whatever you want to call it. Is there really a bottom in sight, that things are about to turn around? The 200-week moving average is one of the key indicators that many people are focusing on because Bitcoin was below it for a while before it recently broke above it and returned to test it twice in the past week. This means that although it broke above it and tested it twice as support, it hasn't yet broken below it. I'm now examining the dollar, the US dollar, and the DXY index since it appears from several charts that the dollar may have a little uptrend over the course of the next few days. And if that is the case, Bitcoin may go below the 200-week moving average, but I predict that it will bounce off of the support trend line it has been bouncing off of in the past and rise once more above the 200-week moving average, waffling back and forth. During the following few weeks. Some claim that it is set to increase, though. Guess we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, now I want to speak about this cryptocurrency project that Warren Buffett is working on and how it recently saw an explosion. Therefore, there is a bank in Brazil that is referred to as a challenger bank and goes by the name of New Bank. It is referred to as a challenger bank since it is a tiny bank and they tend to be more specialized institutions. They provide more versatile items, more affordable prices, and similar things. And they began doing so after 2009. Warren Buffett is now supporting this bank, alright. There are currently 45 million users. New Crypto, a cryptocurrency-backed initiative that would enable users to purchase, trade, and keep cryptocurrencies, was nonetheless just just unveiled. Well, that product cracked 1 million users of that cryptocurrency initiative in the first month actually, in the first three weeks. It's now incredibly intriguing to see a Warren Buffett-backed enterprise do something like provide cryptocurrency, it's hard to believe that they wouldn't have done it if Warren hadn't had any input. However, that is untrue. Not only did it go ahead and start this cryptocurrency initiative, but Warren Buffett also declared that he would convert 1% of the bank's cash on hand into Bitcoin using this project. Now, this is the same person who, a few years back, 
referred to Bitcoin as rat poison in the cryptocurrency community while appearing to have established a bank for the poison. Please let me know in the comments section below whether you think Warren Buffett is genuinely starting to change his mind or if he simply views this as an opportunistic viewpoint. And he says, you know what, I might as well make a quick penny off of it if these folks are going to get into crypto. Tell me what you think in the comments area down below. Okay, let's now discuss digital currencies issued by the central bank. Particularly, this is the one that we are presently working on in Japan. The Central Bank of Japan recently announced they would not proceed with the CBDC project they were working on, which is why the news that just broke the other day made a major splash. They're going to put it on hold. Why? They claim that there was no interest from the general public in it. I don't think the general people will be very interested in central bank digital currencies everywhere, you don't say. More so than anything, it's about the government imposing it on the populace, much like China does. Why then is Japan in limbo? Evidently, they began doing some feasibility studies last year, and the results indicated that it was technically possible to carry out their desired actions. In terms of logistics, they also conducted a few more experiments. The final section of their research focused on how the general public would use and accept a central bank digital money, which received almost just negative feedback and little public interest at all. Although they didn't state it directly, I'm betting that a really tech-forward person moving to a nation like Japan is already aware of the risks associated with a central bank, digital currency, and the fact that it is programmable money, among other things. This survey mentioned how commonplace the usage of credit cards and other digital payment methods was among Japanese residents. The public's preference for items like loyalty incentives and different points that may be earned by utilizing specific credit cards with a variety of payment choices was also emphasized. They prefer utilizing these other payment methods since you can't really do it with a digital currency issued by a central bank. The fact that they push back against this cryptocurrency, a central bank, digital currency, and cryptocurrency is very telling, and the fact that the Central Bank of Japan actually demonstrated that, at least for the time being, is somewhat enlightening. These other payment methods are extremely popular in Japan, which makes sense given that Japan is so tech-forward and tech-progressive. The Bank of Japan also commented, saying, listen, while we've worked on this project, it doesn't appear like we'll be introducing a CBDC anytime soon. Hearing that a technologically advanced nation like Japan is really pushing back and saying, nope, it's not time, is refreshing news for many different nations. We can't possibly desire this right now. There are really too many alternative possibilities, many of which are excellent. Now, they did make claims, which are untrue, of course, such as that CBDCs consume disproportionately more energy than credit cards and other forms of payment. The Bitcoin community will quickly disagree with you and tell you that it is untrue that traditional banking and payment systems consume more energy than any cryptocurrency. Despite the fact that it's generating headlines, please share your opinions on CBDCs in the comments section below if you believe that other nations will follow suit and attempt to counteract the effect of central banks issuing their own digital currencies. Okay, people. If this is your first time here, perhaps think about subscribing and checking out the community page. If you haven't participated in any of them yet, go ahead and check out the new ones. I post polls there on a weekly and almost daily basis because I'd love to hear what you guys think about the stories that are covered on this channel, as well as some of the industry's top stories and some of the macroeconomic issues. Okay, people, I really appreciate you viewing this video so many times and clicking the thumbs up button. I'll see you all in the upcoming video, as usual.